We have exoplanets. One of the first things spoken about in the 12 minute long anonymous video is that around 25 years ago, we didn't know that planets existed outside of our solar system. While that seems hard to believe, that is actually basically true, keeping in mind that this video was released in 2017. The first exoplanets, which are what planets outside of our solar system are called, were discovered in 1992, which is super recently. The video then goes on to explain that today we have found over 3,400 exoplanets that orbit other stars. Suns. This may seem redundant or unimportant, but this is a really important part of our search for alien life. With the vastness of space, there are so many places that need to be searched, so we have to find some place to start, and these planets are the perfect place. It is entirely possible that alien life may thrive off of entirely different things than life as we know it. The things we need to survive might be detrimental to alien life, but how are we supposed to know that when we don't know any aliens? This is why we started our search by looking for places with conditions similar to Earth, which we now call habitable planets. Part of a habitable planet's requirements is that they are orbiting a star, but that they aren't too close or too far from it like we are with the Sun. So what the video is trying to get across is that while 25 years ago we didn't know any, we now know of thousands of planets that might be holding some kind of alien life. While we haven't found the proof yet, we at least have a pretty stellar starting point. In our number 9 spot today we have Dr. Brian O'Leary. One thing Anonymous mentioned mentioned in the video was an apparent quote from Dr. Brian O'Leary, who's a former NASA astronaut and Princeton physics professor. The video stated that he said that there is abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that civilizations have been monitoring us for a very long time, and that their appearance is bizarre from any type of traditional, materialistic, western point of view, and that these visitors use the technologies of consciousness, they use droids, they use co-rotating magnetic disks for their propulsion systems, which seems to be a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon. I obviously have no idea how I could possibly substantiate these claims, but they certainly are interesting regardless of what you personally believe. This could of course just be nonsense in order to stir up the masses, but it could also be someone who's finally telling us the truth, but we're all just too skeptical at this point to believe it. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of what Dr. O'Leary said. Do you think it's a hunk of baloney? or do you think that he just might be telling the truth? In our number 8 spot today we have the FBI documents. Around the halfway mark the person in the anonymous video begins to discuss some sort of FBI documents that are apparently unclassified just sitting there on the website. The video claims that the documents suggest that we've not only been visited by aliens from space but also beings from other dimensions. The video does explain that the document didn't originate from within the FBI but rather from a university department head but that the FBI treated the document with the utmost importance, which is certainly interesting. It's also very important to note, however, that this document was sent in 1947. I'm not sure if that makes the claims more or less likely or credible, but the timing of it definitely seems important, at least to me. While this is one of those things that you have to draw your own conclusions from, in the video it is mentioned that while we are arguing whether or not supposed UFO or alien sightings have really taken place here on Earth or in space, there there are real instances of extraterrestrial beings visiting us, but we're just too focused on the debate to open our eyes and see for ourselves. In our number 7 spot today we have esoteric matters. After the discussion of the FBI documents, there is a claim that these beings that have apparently been visiting us are coming not from a planet as we think of it, but rather some sort of etheric planet that interpenetrates with our own, but that we are unable to perceive. Apparently if you're a student of esoteric matters, these concepts will make a lot more sense to you, or so this anonymous video claims. Apparently these alien beings are able to make a conscious decision to enter our plane, and in that same respect they are also to make a decision to disappear from our view. Apparently they are visiting us as they are thinking about settling here on our plane, and that they are coming here peacefully. During these visits they are also said to have technology that would destroy any sort of attack made on them, so it is advised that if they do make themselves visible to us, we do not attack or make them feel threatened. I'm not so sure about this one, but at the end of the day, I am certainly no student of esoteric matters, so maybe it's just something that my brain cannot comprehend with the knowledge I currently have. In our number 6 spot today we have this UFO footage. This UFO footage is 
coming from another anonymous video which claims that real UFO footage is always censored and that this video has been previously censored but they were here to expose the truth. It is unclear where this UFO video was taken and at the end of the day I'm no expert in debunking these things so it's tough to say whether or not it's real but let's all just take a look and you can judge for yourselves. I know that wasn't the most exciting video, but what do we think aliens are going to be doing if they really are visiting us? What do you guys think? Do you guys think that this video is really showing some sort of UFO? And if you do, do you think it's aliens or just some sort of secret project that we aren't privy to? In our number 5 spot today we have Perseverance. A point that was made in the video is something that we are actually now watching happen in real time and that is the mission to Mars for the Perseverance rover that is currently there digging around in the soil. The video stated that Mars may hold signs of an ancient environment that may have been favorable to microbial life. Well, that is exactly true and the reason the rover is there at all. The Perseverance rover launched from Earth on July 30th, 2020 and made an incredible and successful landing on Mars on February 18th, 2020. While the rover has provided us with some incredible high definition photos of the red planet which truly are incredible to look at, its main objective is to dig around and search for ancient signs of life, collecting rock and soil samples for a possible return to Earth for further research. While Mars thin atmosphere is unable to shield the planet from the high amounts of radiation coming from space now, it is thought that the atmosphere did once act as a better shield and that the environment of Mars may have once been a great host for life which is exactly Exactly why this mission is so important. While when the anonymous video was first released, we were still a ways away from the Perseverance mission taking place, it's really cool to see how it has come to fruition and it's exciting to see the new photos and discoveries that are made each day. In our number 4 spot today we have UFO footage part 2. We have to include just one more video of what is claimed to be proof of aliens visiting us on earth before we get back into the more sciencey top 3 points. This is another video that was uploaded by a member of anonymous and it comes from 2017. The video features a dark sky but it shows what looks like some sort of aircraft with a few flashing lights and it seems like it is able to basically just hover there. Not long after the video starts another mysterious UFO seemingly joins the first one and the two are just seen floating there. What do you guys think these could be? I obviously don't know what an alien aircraft would look like so it's tough to say if this is a realistic example or not. All I know is that if this isn't someone playing a trick and they really saw this in the sky, I have no other possible explanations of what it could be. In our number 3 spot today we have Trappist1. Before I dive into this one guys please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. One of the things Anonymous mentioned in the video was a nearby star called Trappist1. The video didn't go into too much detail detail about this, but I'm here to do that now so we can all know what they were talking about. While Trappist 1 is a star, the revelation that the video spoke about was that this star has an entire solar system of Earth-like planets. This discovery first came in 2017 and upon further research, in 2018 it was revealed that some of the planets just may harbor even more water than Earth does. Some of the planets are a little too close to the star so the water is more atmospheric water vapor. The ones in the middle have liquid water, like us and the furthest ones have ice. Trappist-1 is now the most thoroughly known planetary system apart from ours, which is kinda cool. While the anonymous video made it seem like there was a full blown advanced alien civilization living in this solar system, there still might be potential for some form of microbial life that we just haven't quite found yet. And that is very cool. In our number 2 spot today we have Enceladus. If you had heard of Enceladus before the anonymous video, there's a good chance you knew it is basically an icy snowball floating around in space, or perhaps you simply knew it as a small moon of Saturn with a diameter of 502 kilometers, but as it turns out, this small moon might hold some pretty amazing potential. It was discovered that this moon has hydrothermal processes going on underneath its crust. To us non-scientists that means next to nothing, but what if I said that means that it just 
might have all of the requirements for life, and that it is becoming a greater possibility that we might find microbial life there. Basically, this moon has an icy shell for a surface and then a rocky interior, but between those two layers is a warm ocean, and this ocean is where scientists think the life is most likely to be. This discovery came almost accidentally when the Cassini orbiter arrived to Saturn in 2005, and it found water plumes shooting out of the cracks in the surface of the moon, which made scientists realize that it just may be geologically active. Through more research and by flying the orbiter through the water, by the time 2015 rolled around, scientists knew that it was holding all of the keys to life. While this little moon was never the original focus of research, it quickly took over with its incredibly exciting potential. In our number one spot today, we have Europa. We've got another moon to talk about that was mentioned in the video that also just might be holding the keys to us finding alien life, but this time we're taking it over to Jupiter and its icy moon Europa. Europa has been a point of interest for a while after NASA's Galileo Jupiter probe in the 1990s revealed an unusually warm spot in Europa's cold surface. In March of 2014, the Hubble telescope detected what scientists thought might be a plume of water vapor, but the caution turned to cautious excitement and optimism in February of 2016 when the telescope caught another, much larger plume in the same spot. This has led to the creation of the Europa Clipper mission. While this mission doesn't yet have a set date, it will see an orbiter flying to Europa to fly through these plumes in an attempt to see what they are made out of, similar to the one we just talked about, to see if it really is holding the key to life, or maybe even life itself. One of the scientists on the Clipper mission, Robert Papalardo, explained that if there is life on Europa, it almost certainly was completely independent from the origin of life on Earth. That would mean the origin of life must be pretty easy throughout the galaxy and beyond. 10th spot is the late Queen Elizabeth II. So it's no secret that there are quite a lot of people out there who are not fans of the royal family. And while for some it might just be about an overall lack of likeness towards the monarchy, there are many out there whose hatred stems from a deep-seated belief that everyone in the royal family are in fact shape-shifting lizard people. This all started from some footage that was found online of the Queen where some particularly strange eyes seem to appear out of nowhere. In the video, the Queen is standing at what appears to be a game of sorts, and then all of a sudden her eyes change to look almost like some sort of crazy demon. Immediately people were freaked and jumped to the conclusion that it was because she was a shape-shifting lizard. But others blew it off as just her having bloodshot eyes. Now listen, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a blood shot eye that was completely black before. I'm just saying. As you can imagine, this footage did not help the royal family's rep of being from the constellation Draco and only further cemented the belief that they are all evil lizards. What do you think? Coming in at number 9 is Katy Perry. So here's the thing about lizard people. They tend to be exclusively pinned on celebrities. Now there is some reasoning behind this. It's because the shapeshifters are supposed to be evil and so they take over the bodies of celebrities or leaders in order to be able to have the power to wreak havoc on our world. One of the celebs that people swear is a lizard is none other than Miss Teenage Dream herself, Katy Perry. The footage that brought her into this world comes comes from an interview she did years ago where for just a millisecond it appears like her eyes change color from a sort of blue to green and just for a second it looks like her pupils turn into slits. Oh, I should mention that apparently a calling card of these lizard people is that they have green eyes. So her eyes supposedly changing to green was seen as proof of her real lizard self peeking through. Suspicious? You tell me. Next up at number 8 is Rihanna. I refuse to believe that Rivi could be an evil reptile alien sent here to wreak havoc and cause evil because number one, she's like the chillest human ever and two, I mean she's Rihanna so I, I don't want it to be true. But it looks like even the good ones aren't safe according to believers of the lizard people. The proof comes from some kind of sus footage from what looks like a live talk show or something and even though it's a bit blurry, it does look like there's something weird going on. A 
if you pay close attention, it does appear that her eyes turn into slits for just a millisecond before turning back to normal. I mean, should we be worried? Could she really be a lizard person? I mean, even if she was, she would easily be the most beautiful lizard person I've ever seen, so <laughs> at least there's that. Coming in at number seven is Angelina Jolie. From what I have come to understand about the conspiracy race of the shape-shifting reptiles that walk the earth with us is that more often than not, it is the eyes that give them away. Maybe their eyes are the hardest to control, shape-shifting wise? I'm not totally sure to be honest, but Either way, there are definitely some strange videos out there with some weird things going on in the eyeball region. One of these videos is of A-lister Angelina Jolie. In this particular interview, you can see she's blinking her eyes a ton, which you might not think much of, but when you zoom in really tight and slow down the footage, you can see that there is a half a millisecond where it looks like her pupils elongate into slits before snapping right back into normal. My question is, does the blinking have anything to do with the trying to control their eyes from changing. Again, I have no clue what's true and have no facts to back that up, but the video is for sure a little strange. Next up at number six is Shakira. Once again, another pop princess with the voice of an angel has been accused of being one of the evil lizard people sent to destroy the planet. The clip that caused the uproar is from an interview a few years ago where, yep, you guessed it, her eyes slightly change shape for a millisecond. For starters, her eyes are already quite dark, so it's a little hard to tell at first, but when the video gets slowed down and you zoom in, I will admit I can kind of see where people are going with the whole eyes changing thing. There is a moment where it does kind of look like her pupils shift into a thinner shape and dare I say the iris kind of goes more coppery? Is that a sign? I honestly, I have no idea. Truth be told, it might not be quite as obvious as some of the other ones on the list, but nonetheless, there are many out there that insist she is among the shapeshifters. Apparently it's not just her hips that don't lie, but her eyes too. Coming in at number five is Lady Gaga. Okay, let me make one thing very clear. I'm a huge fan of Lady Gaga. Like, huge. I think she's an amazing artist and just a super badass person. All of that being said, I am fully aware that many people think she's a total weirdo and, like, if lizard people did turn out to be real, I could see why people would suspect Gaga to be one. I mean, if anything, what is more camp than being a shape-shifting reptile masquerading as a human, right? The main clip that brought Gaga into the suspect list of shapeshifters was from a live interview several years back, and just like almost every alleged lizard person, the clues were in her eyes. Now, first off, her eye makeup, gorgeous, but if you peer a little deeper into those eyes, you might notice something kinda looks off. She looks down for a second, blinks her eyes, and then just ever so slightly you can see that it looks like her pupils change shape and get slightly thinner for a second. Then boom, back to normal. Also, she did once say in an interview that she has always loved to shape shift. I mean, she was talking about her hair and makeup, but was it a clue? Is this solid proof she's a lizard person from the constellation of Draco? I guess it depends on who you ask. Next up at number four is Isaiah Carey. Several years back in 1995, there was a reporter for NBC who became an overnight sensation after a hilarious video of him swallowing a grasshopper aired during a live broadcast. People kind of fell in love with him because he had such a huge reaction and totally switched up his entire demeanor after he accidentally swallowed the bug. However, not too long after, some people noticed something was a little off about the video and some even started to wonder if swallowing the bug was an accident at all. What's strange about this video is that if you pay close enough attention, kinda looks like his tongue is actually aiming for the bug, just like a frog reaching for a fly. Not to mention, he has quite a big tongue compared to most people, and it kinda looks a little pointy. Either way, after he swallows the bug, he immediately turns away from the camera, and some have suggested this is to hide any further evidence that he was actively shape-shifting at the time. But also, I would probably turn 
away from a camera if a bug flew into my mouth without warning too. I don't know man, either way the video is hilarious so let me know what you think, evil reptile or funny human? Coming in at number 3 is a mysterious creature. So this video is definitely one of the weirder ones on this list cause like actually what the heck is happening. Inside what appears to be some sort of cave, a pair of glowing orb eyeball things peek out from behind the wall, but when whoever is actually holding the camera advances on them, they quickly retreat back behind the wall. Like, not gonna lie, it's kind of creepy. The creature then continues to peek out to see if the cameraman is gone before stepping out completely, showing its unnerving form, and then suddenly bolting away deeper into the cave, never to be seen again. Now the real question of course, what is it? Is it a shapeshifter? A weird alien? Some other weird thing we have never heard of or seen before? I mean, all I know is I would not want to see that alone in a dark cave by myself. I just have a bad feeling it would kill me and eat my flesh. I'm just saying. Coming in at number 2, a security guard. It goes without saying that presidents are not going to really go anywhere without their security guards, but what do we really know about their security and if there is reason to believe that politicians themselves are a part of the alien lizard race, then wouldn't it make sense that their protection would be too? Well, speaking of, back in 2012 during a speech made by President Obama, footage of the audience captured a peculiar looking security guard in the crowd. At first glance you might think it's just like a pale bald dude standing there, but when they pan to the side, it straight up looks like he has no ears. I mean, what is going on here? It's giving Voldemort if you ask me. Even weirder is when the video zooms in, if you really pay attention, it kind of looks like his head is pulsating. Which truth be told, I have no clue what that could be about, but lots of people have come forward saying it's definitely footage of him shapeshifting right before our eyes. I mean, would that mean that everyone in the CIA is a lizard person or just a select few? I want to know how it's decided what people get taken over by the alien lizard overlords. What is their system is all. I'm just wondering. And last up today in our number one spot is Timothy Geithner. As I mentioned, it's not just A-list movie star celebs that have been accused of being a part of the lizard race taking over mankind. Among some of the most accused are politicians and even the staff that work under them. Former Secretary of the Treasury under President Obama's presidency is among one of those that some have come to believe is a dangerous lizard person hiding behind the face of a human man. The clip that raised some eyebrows and added him into the long list of potential involved personnel came from some kind of speech and it definitely is very odd. Unlike most of the others on this list, it wasn't his eyes that had people questioning him, but the skin surrounding them. For a moment in the video, it looks like Timothy shifts into his reptile form and the scales begin to show through the skin around his eyes, until suddenly he touches his face and it magically disappears. Like could this be faked? <laughs> I mean of course it could, it's the internet, but like was it? Or is it just a really super creepy video proving an alien race of lizard people? You tell me, man. Big bang. Okay, here we go. We'll kick off with some recent news. The James Webb Space Telescope has, of course, been blowing our minds casually for a couple of years now. Since his departure up into space back in 2021, James Webb Space Telescope has been showing us these beautiful displays that we never dreamt of ever seeing. Stars so faint and so far away that until this point, well, we had no idea they were even there. For example, last week, the James Webb Space Telescope found new, well, rather old, galaxies that look like tiny red spots. Now by analyzing the light emitted by these galaxies, astronomers can conclude that these galaxies were born 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. Now these galaxies shouldn't be this old this far away considering they were born so soon after the Big Bang. Doesn't make any sense, shouldn't be there, shouldn't be that old. It's like seeing your grandma younger than you somehow. You're like, that's, no, timeline wise, that shouldn't make any sense. What in the Avengers is going on? Are these aliens before the Big Bang? We have no idea, this is a week ago. Comment your thoughts down below. I think it's aliens for sure. Number nine, ancient Sumerians. All right, we'll go old, but not as old as that red dot. The Mesopotamian civilization was formed in what's now Iraq and Kuwait. Now these civilizations began around the Neolithic revolution. So somewhere around 12, 
12,000 BCE. Now they're sometimes referred to as the cradle of civilization because of course they're old. Mesopotamia was one of the first places to develop agriculture, being right in the middle of Egyptian and the Indus Valley civilizations. And of course we have to mention these ancient Sumerian tablets. Now in these tablets we start to question history. In 1842, British archaeologist Austin Henry Layard covered ruins of this royal archive, thousands of tablets made of clay, the world's oldest overdue library books pretty much. Now these tablets showed Sumerians engaging in a social night with a scene that depicts a banquet from around 26,000 BC. It was the world's first bender actually if I'm being historically accurate. Ancient gods in Mesopotamia were said to have wings and the ability to control all of humanity. These gods were eight feet tall or they could have been aliens from another planet. We, again, we don't know. Could be gods, could be aliens, could be neither. Drawings of a very tall man like me, who knows. The Sumerians wrote one of the oldest tales in human history. It's called the Epic of Gilgamesh. So maybe these alien gods inspired them and inspired literature. Who knows? I'd probably write a book if eight foot tall winged gods landed on my crops for sure. I'd write a journal or two. Number eight, the Madonna with Saint Giovanni. All right, going back to some art for this one. In our history, even in our ancient history, there have been writings and paintings of the, well, potential extraterrestrial variety. As one example shows, the 15th century painting, the Madonna with the Saint Giovanni, it depicts the Virgin Mary. But also in the background of this painting, features some sort of hovering disc-like object that looks, well, it looks a lot like a UFO. No? I don't know. I can't really describe this. This isn't the only example, however, as we've seen other sorts of otherworldly beings in ancient cave paintings and other Sanskrit scrolls. There are even some people who swear that it's also written in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, aliens are pretty OG. It certainly says something that potential alien sightings have existed since, well, that far back in our human history, so it must either point to proof of alien existence or just humans being obsessed with conspiracies of alien existence. I'm on the latter side. I really want aliens to be real, but I don't think so. I don't know. Number seven, the Nazca Lines. We've all heard of alien crop circles at one point or another. I remember watching the movie Science when I was younger and, well, then I couldn't sleep for 28 years. That's awesome. That birthday party scene? Never again. Thank you so much. Yeah, that scene. Remember that one? So scary, right? Aliens. Just 200 miles southeast of Peru, we can find hundreds of markings etched into the earth. Now, they're massive pieces of art, almost like crop circles, but, you know, without the farming stuff. More intimidating, more, you know, stone. The biggest ground graffiti spans over 1,200 feet, and you've probably seen it. Hopefully not. Many believe that this was an ancient ritual for water. Given its location, well, that theory certainly checks out. Another theory written in 1968 in Eric Von Daniken's book, Chariot of the Gods, suggests that ancient Nazca Lines was a site for ancient alien visitors. Like a landing pad almost. Airport, there it is, one of those. Leaving behind knowledge in the form of these massive doodles and, well, technology. Number six, the USS Nimitz. All right, I couldn't imagine a worse place to find alien life than in the middle of the ocean. Ugh, that's creepy. Although I will argue that an octopus is completely alien. That's messed up, they shouldn't exist. November 2004, the USS Princeton is a part of the USS Nimitz strike group and they noted this craft, a UFO, a UAP rather. That's what they're calling them now, UAP. Now at first they saw this craft not in the sky, but under the sea, which is interesting because the go fast video that we've always been looking at with that thing whipping through the air, seems like it's coming from the ocean. The ocean is very unexplored, so there could be a plethora of aliens just waiting down there. Who knows? I certainly hope not, but who knows? A few moments later, this white tic-tac shaped alien craft came out of the water and a white tic-tac shaped UAP, always egg shaped in history, that's always a fun sign. Then two FA-18 fighter jets were flying above it. And as early reports put the egg 80,000 feet above the water, so of course that's when they had to fly in. They saw it fly up, whip through the air, and then again, they saw it dip into the ocean with no exhaust, no infrared, didn't pick up anything, nothing like that at all. It just shot away at three times the speed of sound. Loop, underwater, gone. Can aliens go underwater too? That's a little bit OP, it's not fair. Number five, a mua mua. This one here has scientists and Reddit users all fighting alike. So just a few years ago, scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system and they called it a muamua. It was widely agreed upon that it was an interstellar comet that had somehow swung out from another star and ended up near us at a very high velocity. But upon closer examination, they realized that something was propelling this and causing it to accelerate. And this is when the debate started. A.B. Loeb, who is a Harvard University astrophysicist, proposed the idea that rather than a comet, this could be an alien probe that is being pushed by a light sail. A light sail is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that 
I could be accelerating this, you know, space cigar. Other scientists didn't agree with this. Fair, I mean, more than fair. And instead, they believe that this is possibly the hydrogen ice could have been melting off the object in a way that would mimic a rocket or something that can propel it in nature. But in August of last year, AB wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before this, long before it reached our solar system. So, really don't know what's propelling this massive space cigar. So, we think aliens. Do I think aliens? Maybe. I don't know. I'll never tell. Number four, flaming thing, Texas. I just watched Nope the other day and the idea of aliens in Texas or aliens over top of a farm, you know, that birthday party scene with the dude walking, it always gives me chills. I don't like it. Aliens love a good crop, apparently. Imagine opening the newspaper though in 1957 and right on the front cover you read, leveling flaming thing brings world knocking at city's door. What does that even mean? What do I, how do I react to that? Back in 1957 in, of course, Leveland, Texas, multiple eyewitness reports began to flood in about an egg-shaped object, again, an egg-shaped object, or this circular flash of light. It was just jetting across Leveland skies. One witness recalls the object making a loud humming noise as it flew by, which is different than other accounts that we've heard about, you know, flying eggs in history. But this egg shape keeps coming back up. But this is an encounter where it's been reported as loud with a great rush of wind, which is, again, very different. Believable, but different. It was a loud egg as opposed to a quiet sea egg. On top of that claim, the witness's car radio began to go haywire as it passed. The radio thing isn't too crazy. I mean, growing up, my computer speakers would always tell me if a text was going to come in. So I was so odd. I have no idea how that works still to this day. The Air Force ended up commenting on it. They said that this was just a phenomenon caused by electrical storms and not a space egg passing by. But do we buy that? Is that why we're here right now watching this video on Most Amazing Top 10? Giving it a thumbs up, subscribing? We want to believe in aliens, right? Let's do it, let's move on, almost there. Number three, Europa. One of Jupiter's many moons called Europa has a red tinge to it. And in 2001, NASA scientists revealed that this tinge, this little might be possible that alien microbes are responsible for this reddish color. Again, we saw life way out in the galaxy that was also a faint red. So red means dead? I don't know, red means alive? Who knows? The surface of this moon is mostly ice, but it has been shown that it reflects infrared radiation in a bizarre way. This means that something is binding it together, but researchers haven't been able to come up with the correct combination of elements and or compounds to make that data make any sense. But like something's red and there's life. Well, I don't know. I don't know how science works. That's my best uh, impersonation of science people. Uh, there's some bacteria on Earth that can thrive in extreme conditions and that also have that red and brown color, which could potentially be responsible for this color on the moon. Sort of space bacteria, ice bacteria, whatever. There's something living up there. The surface temperature might be too cold for them to survive, but the warmer interior might be where these are all located. Some geological activity on the moon could push them closer to the surface where they then flash frozen in place. So they're warm under the water, then they go and they freeze. That's a horrible way to go out. A little space bacteria. Number two, O'Hare Airport. A UAP spotted in the airport. Worst place to see it, in my opinion. Are you sure it wasn't an airplane? Heard there's a few over there. The day was November 7th and the year was 2006. Flight 446 was gearing up with passengers and luggage, of course, ready to fly to North Carolina from Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. But the flight was a tad delayed due to the, you know, due to the hovering metallic craft hovering above all the planes. Yeah, can't really take off when that shiny ball's in the way. 12 United employees and others were just there to fly out. It was 4.15 p.m., so it wasn't at midnight. Nobody was tired. Nobody was delirious. It was clear as day. It was a business day otherwise, and everyone saw this. Witnesses watched it hover for around five minutes before it eventually zipped off back into the sky. It even pushed through clouds, so people say it wasn't a balloon. This report was one of the most read stories on the Chicago Tribune's website. I mean, of course, it's about aliens, but eventually it was deemed a weather phenomenon, because why, of course it was, wasn't it? The UFO was not seen on the radar or any radar for that matter, so now we're just gonna go off what people said that many years ago. Although last week we saw three balloons and have no idea what they were, so we'll never find out at this rate. And finally, number one, 2021 UFO. February 21st, 2021, a blogger was using a radio scanner to try and pick up the feed from an aircraft, but they received much more than they ever expected. They intercepted the transmission of the wrong aircraft, but at the right time, it seems. As an American Airlines flight was headed from Cincinnati to Phoenix around 1.20 p.m., the pilot came on the radio to ask a question.
question. Do we have any targets up here? Also, what an odd question to ask while you're flying. The voice continued. We just had something go right over top of us. Now after this, he followed up with, I hate to say this, but it looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast over top of us flying. Yeah, not, not where you want to see anything in the air around you. You don't want to see anything that looks like that in the air. No, that's so scary. Not only were FAA air traffic controllers not able to see any object in the area on their radar scope, but they still haven't been able to identify what that could have been. Just a rogue something flying by. Nice, that's common. Glad I went flying yesterday. This does happen more often than any of us really know. Like I said, we had three balloons pop up and we have no idea where half of them went or what happened to them. But it's possible this object could have been part of some sort of covert military or Navy operation, but it certainly raises some alarm bells. We don't want to do any tests beside a, a swoosh airline. Probably not dangerous. Uh, dangerous? Probably not safe. Do we believe in aliens? Comment down below. Do, what are these balloons that are approaching? I don't know. I have no idea what's real anymore. But I do know you should subscribe and hit that thumbs up. The organic object. Leland Melvin is an American engineer and retired NASA astronaut who served on board the space shuttle Atlantis as a mission specialist. He is an incredibly brilliant man with an incredible resume and possibly has one of the best NASA photos of all time. But it's his expertise and intelligence that really makes this story so unnerving. He claimed that while on a space mission as he was orbiting Earth, which is definitely the coolest beginning for a spooky tale, but also really sets the stage for a multitude of horrifying things that could be about to happen. While he was on this mission, he said he saw a quote, alien-like organic object. NASA disputed his claims and said that what he saw was just ice, but I feel like I trust the person who actually saw it with their own eyes. Leland went on to write that whatever he saw was quote, translucent, curved, organic looking. I have no explanations to offer, but I will say it certainly is interesting and kind of terrifying, and it only adds more horror to the story when you realize that they tried to cover it up. In our number nine spot today, we have Leveland. This incident took place in 1957 in Leveland, Texas, and actually was the inspiration for a scene in the film Close Encounters of the Third Kind. In the real life incident, dozens of citizens from across the city began individually reporting seeing a rocket or strange set of lights or some sort of unidentified object, but that wasn't it. Whatever these citizens were seeing was also reportedly interfering with their vehicles as well. Engines were suddenly just dying out and lights were cutting out. If this happened just one or two times, this could have been some kind of a really strange coincidence, but it was way too many instances. Something else had to have been at play. The authorities at first thought that the reports were a hoax until they too saw the strange lights as they began to investigate. This is where Project Blue Book came in to also investigate, and they came up with quite the conclusion. They claimed that whatever had happened here was simply just a case of an electrical storm and ball lightning that caused the lights in the mechanical malfunctions. That's super reasonable, but the catch with this explanation is that there were no reported thunderstorms in the area that night at all. I'm just saying, something here clearly isn't adding up quite right. In our number eight spot today, we have the lone survivor. This is an unexplained signal that was first detected in 2003 when astronomers were using a massive telescope in order to re-examine 200 different areas of the sky. I say re-examine because these were areas where there was once a signal that was detected coming from them, and they were taking a look back to see if they could detect detected the same signal again. During this re-examination, they found all of the signals had disappeared except for one. The signal didn't only stick around, but it actually got stronger. The signal is coming from between the constellations of Pisces and Aries, and the curious thing about this location is that it resides in a place where there are known, known, obvious planets or stars. To make things a little more mysterious, there are scientists who believe that the frequency this signal is in is the frequency alien life would be most likely to use if they were trying to contact us. I have no idea what leads them to that theory, but it felt too interesting to exclude. While there are other possibilities of what these signals are or where they're coming from, it's quite an interesting piece of information and is something that definitely deserves more looking into. In our number seven spot today, we have the space snake. Dr. Franklin Story Musgrave is an American physician and retired NASA astronaut, and considering how credible he tends to be, despite the absurdities of this story, it makes it hard to pass off as a lie so easily. While he was in space, he claims that he saw something that I don't wish upon anyone, a sort of space snake. He said that he saw an eight foot long white snake floating through space. I don't even know what I would do. Probably cry? 
probably call Houston? I'm not sure. There are many people who think that this was simply just a detached hose from the spaceship, but Dr. Musgrave remains adamant on what he saw, and to be completely honest, I believe him. Maybe his mind was playing tricks on him, I mean, I don't know what happens in space, but I do find it really hard to believe that this person, who would likely be really familiar with the parts of a spacecraft, mistook a hose for a snake. Also, how would they not notice an 8 foot long hose missing? Again, I'm certainly no astronaut or scientist or engineer, but it all just seems very strange. In our number 6 spot today we have the classified report. We are just barely getting into 2023, but already there are some crazy announcements, including one regarding a report that was delivered to Congress from the Director of National Intelligence. Basically since August of last year there has been a total of 510 unidentified aerial phenomenon observed in protected airspace or near sensitive facilities. According to the report, 26 of these were described as drones, 163 were labeled as balloons or balloon-like entities and six were described as clutter, whatever that means. This is all fine and well, but the concern sets in when we consider that this leaves 171 sightings unaccounted for, some of which appear to have demonstrated unusual flight characteristics or performance capabilities. It's also important to note that the majority of these sightings are coming directly from Navy and Air Force pilots. Here's the thing, what we know as the public is only a 12 page declassified summary of the actual real secret report that was delivered to Congress. Only time will tell if we ever find out what the rest of the report includes or what will happen with further investigation into the 171 sightings, but hopefully if answers do arise, one day we'll find out. And uh, hey, maybe if they don't, maybe Anonymous will just hack them. And then we'll find out. In our number 5 spot today we have the lights. Leroy Chiao was the commander of the ISS in 2005 and this is exactly when this strange sighting occurred. It is said that he wasn't the only one who witnessed this however as it is said that the entire crew was there to see this really unexplainable occurrence along with him. Basically it is said that they saw a strange set of lights while up in space. He went out to describe the lights and said that they were in the formation of an upside down V and that they ended up just stumbling upon this bizarre situation as the formation flew past them. I'm just gonna say it. I mean, I think it's aliens. I just don't have any other possible explanations. And you're telling me that the whole crew saw it? Not just one person this time, all of them. I swear, nothing will convince me of aliens more than an astronaut's first hand account. Cause like, it's hard for aliens to come and visit us here on Earth, but like, they're just flying through space? They're like, yeah man, this is what we do too. Just on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm going a little crazy. In our number four spot today, we have the Lubbock incident. On August 25th, 1951, in Lubbock, Texas, a group of scientists from Texas Technical College were all hanging out in the backyard of geology professor Dr. W.I. Robinson. They were all chilling, enjoying each other's company, until around 9.20 p.m. when they saw something strange. It was a V-shaped formation of 15 to 30 bluish green lights passing overhead. They were completely confused over what it could be, but figured that the light would likely reappear, which they did. About an hour later the lights reappeared and at this point all of these scientists knew that they had witnessed something exceptionally interesting, but what was it? The scientists weren't the only one to witness the lights either. About 350 miles away in Albuquerque, New Mexico, an employee of the Atomic Energy Commission's top secret Sandia Corporation, who had a high level Q security clearance, had been sitting outside with his wife, quote, gazing at the night sky, commenting on how beautiful it was, when both of them were were startled at the sight of a huge airplane flying swiftly and silently over their home. On the aft edge of the wings, there were six to eight pairs of soft, glowing bluish lights. There were more sightings as well, all reporting a similar thing. The group of scientists began investigating, tracking the lights, which they had witnessed 12 more times. They measured the angle of the flights, they tracked the speed, and they attempted unsuccessfully to try and measure the UFO's altitude. Here's the deal with this though, the government did end up investigating, but the official explanation for these lights is the most cryptic message I've ever seen. It read quote, I thought that the professor's lights might have been some kind of birds reflecting the light from mercury vapor street lights, but I was wrong. They weren't birds. 
They weren't refracted light, but they weren't spaceships. The lights that the professors saw have been positively identified as a very commonplace and easily explainable natural phenomena. I can't divulge exactly the way the answer was found because it is an interesting story of how a scientist set up complete instrumentation to track down the lights. Telling the story would lead to his identity and exchange for his story, I promised the man complete anonymity. Despite people claiming that this mystery has been solved, by this explanation, people are left with a lot more questions than answers. You know? Just some natural phenomena. We're not gonna tell you which one though. In our number three spot today, we have glowing green. Gordon Cooper is a well known astronaut after having flown the Mercury 9 and the Gemini 5, and in fact, he was the last American to spend time in space alone. But despite all of these exciting accolades, I wanna take you back to May 15th, 1963. Here, he was sent off into space in a Mercury capsule for a 22 orbit journey around the Earth, and while on this journey, he saw something extremely unsettling a glowing green object that would approach his capsule. During his final orbit, he did tell the tracking station of this object that was quickly approaching his capsule, and they were able to pick up this UFO on their radar. But once Cooper landed, reporters were told that he was not allowed to answer questions regarding this UFO. It's even more interesting, considering how Gordon has been a very vocal and firm believer in UFOs, so I have to ask, what do you think this was? In our number two spot today, we have the Shag Harbor Incident. This UFO encounter is often referred to as Canada's Roswell, so I was shocked that I hadn't heard of it before. Basically, this incident took place on October 4th, 1967, when an unknown object crashed into the water near Shag Harbor, which is a tiny town in Nova Scotia. There were at least 11 people who witnessed this object as it crashed, and many people claim to have heard a whistling sound followed by a loud bang when the crash took place. The witnesses that claimed to have seen the UFO were all doing a bunch of different things at the time. One couple was just sitting on their porch, but two witnesses that really get me are a flight pilot and a ship captain. On Air Canada Flight 305, First Officer Robert Ralph pointed out to Captain Pierre Charbonneau that there was something strange out the left side of the aircraft. They reported an object tracking along at a parallel course a few miles away and described it as a brilliantly lit rectangular object with a string of smaller lights trailing the object. Shortly after they first noticed it, there was a large but silent explosion near the unknown object, and then two minutes later, Later, there was a second explosion, but this one faded to a blue cloud. As for the ship captain, Captain Leo Howard Mercy saw four blips on the decorator that were totally stationary. This led to him looking up to the sky, and this is when he saw four bright objects sitting in a rectangular formation about 28 kilometers from the vessel's window. He wasn't even the only one who saw it on board. The entire crew of nearly 20 fishermen stood on deck and watched. A man named Lori Wickens was another one of the witnesses, and he and some friends ended up calling the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, because they saw a huge object floating in the Atlantic Ocean about a thousand feet offshore. This is all super weird, and not only the RCMP, but also the Royal Canadian Navy and the Royal Canadian Air Force became involved in the investigation, but nothing was ever recovered or found, but it was also revealed that all commercial, private, and military aircrafts along the eastern seaboard were accounted for. So what could all of these witnesses have seen? Since they never Never officially identified what it was, in the official Government of Canada documents, it is listed as a UFO. In our number one spot today, we have the 2021 UFO. On February 21st of 2021, a blogger was using a radio scanner to try and pick up the feed from an aircraft when he received much more than he ever expected. He intercepted the transmission of the wrong aircraft but at the right time. As an American Airlines flight was headed from Cincinnati to Phoenix around 1.19 p.m., the pilot came on the radio to ask the question, do you have any targets up here? We just had something go right over top of us. After this, he followed up with, quote, I hate to say this, but it looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast right over top of us. Not only were FAA air traffic controllers not able to see any object in the area on their radar scope, but they still have been unable to identify exactly what it could have been. This does happen more often than any of us really know, and it is possible that the object could have been a part of some covert military or navy operation, but it certainly raises some alarm bells that it was unable to be tracked in any sort of capacity. I wonder if this is one of these stories that will remain a mystery, or if one day we'll get some sort of answers as to what exactly happened here. Sightings. Who better to trust about what's going on in space than people who have actually been to space before? That's 
Wright, numerous astronauts over the years have reported seeing things that they think might be UFOs. Buzz Aldrin was one of the astronauts aboard the Apollo 11, and during their journey, they all reported seeing flying objects. Of course, space debris exists, and it could just be some metal junk that was adrift in space. But then, why did they report that the objects appeared to be following them? When they thought that it might have just been a detached part of the rocket that was flying alongside them, they were informed that this piece was actually 6,000 miles away from them, and they definitely wouldn't have been able to see it from that far away. He also said that when they brought it up, they were briefed to not talk about what they had seen out in space. Well, the government can try all they want to cover things up, but eventually, word always gets out. Number 9. Paintings now let's go well beyond spaceships and astronauts and move into the far more distant past, because alien sightings certainly aren't a new thing and seem to have been around for centuries. One piece of evidence that people often cite is a painting titled The Madonna with Saint Giovannino. It was painted in the 15th century by Dominic Gerlando and appears to depict a UFO flying around in the background, its shape matching up with people's frequent depictions of flying saucers as being alien spacecrafts. There also appears to be beams of light coming out from the bottom of the ship, and this has led people to believe that it is unmistakably an alien craft, and not just something else placed up in the sky. And if you take a look at it, it does seem hard to believe that it could be anything else, as what other dark object would make sense to be floating in the sky like that? If you have any ideas, let me know what else you think it might be. Number 8. The Tic Tac UFO Back in 2004 on the coast of California, a US Navy pilot named David Fravor reported seeing something strange. In fact, he reported seeing something that was, quote, something not from this earth. They were about 60 to 100 miles off the coast of California, and he was leading a strike fighter squadron through some exercises when the incident occurred. He said that he saw a tic tac shaped vessel flying through the air at incredible speeds, but it wasn't just him who saw it. It was also reported by another flight crew who actually followed after the craft and even filmed it. While the footage was originally kept classified, it's now been made available to the public. The case was then published by the New York Times after the Pentagon acknowledged its Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, which is actually the Pentagon's own 21st century study of UFO sightings. Number 7. Wow! Exclamation point. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, otherwise known as SETI, is a group that, well, searches for extraterrestrial intelligence. In 1977, a large radio telescope outside of Ohio was scanning the skies on behalf of SETI when they picked up a signal that lasted for 72 seconds. The Printouts of readings often included low numbers, which was typically just the background noise that the telescope picked up. But then a scientist noticed that there was a sudden string of letters as well as larger numbers. The letters went all the way up to U, which indicated a signal 30 times stronger than the typical background noise. Upon seeing these consecutive letters, which would represent a very strong signal and something potentially alien, he circled them and wrote the word WOW followed by an exclamation point in bright red pen. To this day, we've never really seen anything else like it, and the extraordinary readout has yet to ever be duplicated. Number 6. Viking Mars Now let's get into some more science-y factual stuff. When people think of aliens, the term that might often come to mind is Martians, being attributed specifically to aliens that reside on the planet of Mars. NASA has sent a lot of things out there, and one expedition was referred to as Viking, them sending out little robots to take readings of the planet. One test that they performed was done on the soil, mixing soil with radioactive carbon labeled nutrients to see if they would produce radio radioactive methane gas, this being a chemical sign of life on other planets. And it did, the test coming back with a positive result and finding organic molecules. But NASA just brushed it off I guess, because they said that the other experiments didn't end up with the same results, so they just said it was a false positive. But one of the original scientists and others who have analyzed the data stand by their discovery saying that the other experiments had just been ill-equipped for performing the tests and finding the same results. Number 5. Martian Fossil Let's hear from NASA again, this event taking place in 1996 when they announced that they had found a Martian fossil. They said that they had found fossilized microbes within a lump of Martian rock, a meteorite that is theorized to have been blasted off the planet around 50 
18 million years ago before finally winding up in Antarctica where it was discovered 12 years prior in 1984. They analyzed it a lot of course and found organic molecules as well as small bits of the mineral known as magnetite, which can sometimes be found in earth bacteria. Researchers also said that under an electron microscope they were able to see traces of nanobacteria. So it seems like evidence is continuing to stack up that other planets are, or used to be, capable of sustaining life. And with a universe as infinitely large as ours, it's hard to say that it's impossible that life on other planets could ever exist. Number 4. The Super Hornet Let's now take a look at another piece of evidence that came out following the Pentagon's acknowledgement of their Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program. This took place back in 2015 on the East Coast and is another video of evidence discovered by the US Navy, this time by a FA-18 Super Hornet, a strike fighter that reaches speeds of up to 2,000 kilometers an hour. That's pretty fast. The pilots see the unidentified object moving at incredibly high speeds over the water and they struggle to keep up but are finally able to get a lock on it. When they do, they start cheering and one even says, what the F is that thing? They continue to follow it and seem to be unable to figure out what it possibly could be. This is another piece of evidence that had to go through a declassification process before it could be released to the public. Makes you wonder what other video footage and potential signs of alien life the government might be hiding from us in a file cabinet labeled classified. Number 3. Chicago O'Hare In November 2006 in Chicago, Illinois, airline staff and pilots alike were shocked by what they had witnessed. Multiple people reported seeing what they described as a flying saucer in the air. It was an overcast day and the UFO seemed to be just hovering over the Chicago O'Hare airport terminal. They then described how it seemed to shoot up into the air incredibly quickly, so fast that it punched a hole through the cloud cover above it. The FAA or Federal Aviation Administration described it as simply being a strange weather phenomenon and they wouldn't be investigating it, so don't worry about it. Of course, that's what they want us to think. But so many people at once reporting seeing a flying saucer shooting through the clouds doesn't really sound like a weather phenomenon to me. One flight traffic control official said, To fly 7 million light years to O'Hare and then have to turn around and go home because your gate was occupied is simply unacceptable. Number 2. SETI Readings now, now let's go back to the SETI project again. If you've somehow already forgotten by now, that refers to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Back in 2003, they were using a large telescope in Puerto Rico to re-examine around 200 sections of the sky that had all previously shown unexplained radio signals. All of the signals had disappeared except for one which had actually become stronger. It came from a spot between the constellations Pisces and Aries where there aren't any known stars or planets. The signal was emitting the frequency for hydrogen, the most common element which both absorbs and emits energy. Some astronomers believing that this is the most likely element aliens might use to send a message to us for this reason. The signal from this spot in space has now been recorded a total of three times and has left many people wondering if it is truly a signal coming from aliens. Number 1. The Phoenix Lights On March 13th in 1997, an event took place that was referred to as Lights Over Phoenix or the Phoenix Lights Phenomenon. On this day, hundreds of witnesses reported seeing otherworldly lights across Arizona, Nevada, and northern Mexico. There were two main events, the first being a giant V-shaped aircraft that had five lights on it, maybe thrusters, though it apparently didn't make any sound. Then later that night, there were a series of red and orange lights in the sky that did didn't appear to move at all. And while air traffic control employees could see the lights in the sky, they couldn't see them on their radars. The governor of the state of Arizona at the time said, I'm a pilot and I know just about every machine that flies. It was bigger than anything I've ever seen. It remains a great mystery. And it really does remain a mystery. To this day, nobody seems to have any real or solid explanation for what the large spacecraft and the lights might have been. It was said that it was a military flare drop, but this came after their original original statement that they had had no planes in the air. And even a recreation of the event didn't line up with what people had seen, flares flickering and burning out after only a few seconds. I have an explanation though, 
it was aliens. And we have a ghost in Cepheus. This looks like a ghost in the ether for sure. It's actually a rather mysterious dusty curtain featuring a very faint reflection of Nebula VDB 152. The reddish tinge you see is ultraviolet light from a star causing a rusty looking luminescence in the nebula dust. Described as a cosmic phantom, this picture was released by NASA on Halloween in 2012 and titled A Ghost in Cepheus. This intergalactic ghost is one 1,400 light years away, so arguably a safe enough distance for us to deal with. Who knows how fast this ethereal dust can travel though? Also, who knows what this dust is like up close? I don't trust it. Dust it. Coming in at number nine, we have telescope ghouls. Whoa, 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 look up at the top of the James Webb Space Telescope. Do you see what I see? Are these the ghosts of dead astronauts or technicians? Or maybe they're alien apparitions? This photo by NASA's Chris Gunn is incredible, and he has aptly titled it Ghosts and Mirrors for obvious reasons. So it turns out that the picture taken in the Goddard Space Flight Center's spacecraft system development and integration facility clean room is taken with a super long exposure, all the while ultraviolet lights were being shone over the telescope to look for contamination. Now the result is this spooky picture. Sounds like a reasonable explanation, right? Some may say too reasonable, joking, but this telescope may well capture some spooky images of its very own in the future. It's the successor to Hubble, and it's off to explore the universe in March 2021. Any Lord of the Rings fans out there, stand up. How much does this exosolar planet look like the Eye of Sauron at number 8? Like, creepily so. Did J.R.R. Tolkien know about the formal hut when he wrote The Lord of the Rings in 1937? If he didn't, perhaps he foreshadowed it. Get a load of this picture. This is Formal Hout B in orbit around Formal Hout. The exoplanet is also known as Dagon. It's an extrasolar object and it orbits a star that gives it its name. How far away is this terrifying eye formation? Only 25 light years. The 2012 images from the Hubble Space Telescope are terrifying. The name Dagon in mythology is a Jewish deity that represents a half man, half fish. Just a side note there for you. Coming in at number seven, did NASA capture an alien moon base? And also, did they accidentally release pictures of it? Hmm. According to some conspiracists, then yeah, they did. Have a look at these and tell me what you think. Is this alien evidence? Conspiracists YouTube channel Secure Team 10 claim that these images were proof of an alien base on the moon. The YouTube channel has 1.7 million subscribers, so a lot of people are watching their content. Their channel is filled with moon conspiracies, and they think that these images are a smoking gun for NASA. Ufologist and hoax Buster Scott Brando said that the images used by Secure Team 10 were low quality and low resolution. He seemed to think that the images are just an optical illusion. Who knows though? Another classic from the Daily Express, we have alien astronauts caught on camera at number 6. Some think that Mars rover Curiosity captured aliens, others think that it's a widespread conspiracy that humans are already on Mars. The first manned Mars mission is set to begin within the next 10 years, but some are saying that the photos taken by Curiosity and published by NASA already show that there are humans on the red planet. Some people think that these shadow images show astronauts working on the rover to repair it. Others say that the droids show humanoid looking aliens. Now the conspiracists say that NASA didn't realise how much they were showing when the images were released into the public domain. So is it aliens or are humans already up on Mars? If so, why would that be hidden from us? Or do these pictures have a more logical explanation? US UFO conspiracist good old Scott C. Waring said that this just goes to show the public that the rover is being maintained by humans on Mars and that there are other spacecraft kept secret from the public that can carry peers to Mars in just a few minutes. You know what Scott, I don't know about that one. Okay, these death eaters living out there in space terrify me at number 5. The Harry Potter fans in this video will probably be just as freaked out by this as I am. I don't like them. Get a load of what is lurking in the mist of the Carina Nebula. To me, these are straight up Death Eaters waiting to suck out my soul. But actually, 
they're supposed to be knots of dark molecular gas. Knots of dark molecular gas waiting to suck up my soul, right? These clouds of gas surround the Great Nebula in Carina, which used to be one of the brightest stars in the sky in the 1800s, but now it's significantly faded. This maybe lends credence to my whole sucking theory, right? Okay, fine, they probably aren't Death Eaters, but still, they're spooky. This picture freaks me out. Coming into number four, we have the Hand of God. NASA released this X ray image of light detected by NASA's Chanda X ray observatory in 2000. 2014. Can you see why they called it the Hand of God? It kind of looks like, you know. So this is actually a pulsar wind nebula, a stellar corpse that spins rapidly, firing a particle wind. NASA themselves are mystified by the shape. Alongside the image on their website, they wrote, One of the big mysteries of this object is whether the pulsar particles are interacting with the material in a specific way to make it look like a hand, or if the material is in fact shaped like a hand. Now a lot of people do genuinely believe that this is God's mark in the universe, like the eye that cropped up earlier. Now I'm not too convinced, but I'd love to know what you think. Ah, we have a famous Mars picture that caused a stir at number three. We have Bigfoot on Mars. Mars's now defunct robot rover Spirit captured this image in late 2007. Who this? A Rudy Nudy alien lady or Bigfoot? Either way, aliens, right? This image boosted the life on Mars discussion, with many conspiracists saying that this image was proof. NASA explained the image is simply the paradelia phenomena. This is where humans see faces when they aren't there. Analyzing Spirit's image, if this was an alien, it'd be pretty small, according to Phil Platt of Bad Astronomy website. Anyway, NASA says it's nothing more than a Martian rock, although NASA would say that, wouldn't they? Probably because it is just a rock, right? Coming into number two, we have this screaming skull. It's pretty terrifying. This screaming skull was another of NASA's Halloween releases, this time from the year 2000. The haunting image was taken from the orbiting Chandra Observatory and is one of a cluster of galaxies known as Perseus. You can see Perseus right here in X ray vision. The Perseus cluster contains thousands upon thousands of galaxies, so we can't really truly comprehend this picture. It's just much more than a spooky picture than what looks like a skull, it's a lot going on there. While the image is already pretty spooky, it gets scarier when you realise that the bright spot in the x-ray is a black hole. Not to worry though, this scary skull cluster is 320 million light years away. Finally at number one, we have a truly iconic and somewhat infamous picture, the Viking 1 faces on Mars. This is one of the most famous NASA images out there and has been used as absolute fuel to conspiracy theorists fire over the past 40 years. That was since the picture was taken in July 1976. The snap was taken by NASA's Viking 1 spacecraft and seemed to show the shadowy likeness of a human face, only this face is two miles long. Taken in the Cydonia region of Mars, the image was sent back to mission controllers at the Jet Propulsion Lab. At the time, theorists went wild saying that it was evidence of an ancient civilization on Mars. Now, the image did quite look like an Egyptian pharaoh after all. NASA explained that the image was just a Martian messer with the sunlight playing tricks. NASA later went back with the Mars Orbiter camera, but people simply explained the lack of face that time by saying that it was a cloudy day and the alien detail couldn't be seen. I don't know, I'm thinking it probably was just a trick of the light. If you enjoyed these awesome alien photos, then you have to check out this video right here. It's part one of this incredible series that aims to expose the truth. Click the video now to see even more undeniable alien evidence.